A really fun application of vectors is navigation problems. And by navigation problems, I mean problems that involve plotting the course for an airplane. Um, now, first of all, an airplane, let's say that this is our airplane, an airplane has a velocity vector, and the velocity um, is represented by two quantities. First of all, the airspeed. That's the magnitude of the velocity, airspeed. And that's the speed of the airplane with respect to the air around it. But there's also the direction, and that's called the heading. Now, in navigation, let me put this aside, the heading is measured clockwise from north. And that's going to be a little different for us, because we usually measure counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. So this heading, this could be our heading of, oh, let's say, 110 and 20 degrees, something like that. So a heading of 120 degrees and airspeed of, say, 500 miles per hour. So the airspeed's the magnitude of the velocity vector. The heading is its direction. Now the other variable in these navigation problems is wind. Wind has speed and direction. And so let me draw that. Let's say the wind's blowing in this direction. Now the wind vector starts at this point and goes here. We're imagining that the airplane is right, right at this point. I'll call the wind vector W. The magnitude of this vector is the wind speed. And the wind speed, maybe it's going to be 50 miles an hour, let's say. The wind direction, we always measure the direction that the wind is coming from. Now, not the direction that it's pointing to. So the wind direction would actually be this angle. So that's going to be wind direction. And in this picture, maybe it's 25 degrees. <clears throat> now. When you have an airplane that's got a heading and airspeed that re that's represented by this vector, and you've got wind that's pointing in this direction, the wind is going to have a combined effect with the airspeed of the airplane, and there's going to be a resultant of the two forces, the two, or the two velocities. They add up together, and they, get, they give you a sum. So let's say that this is the sum of the two vectors. and we'll call it, I don't know, g. Now, the magnitude of g is the ground speed. This is how fast the airplane is going with respect to the ground. I'll put the airplane back here, because I know it's fun. This is the ground speed. But it's also important to know what direction the plane is actually traveling with respect to the ground, because that's where the plane is going. So that's going to be this angle, and that's called the course. So just remember, you know, the, the, the plane is pointed in the direction that the, heading, uh, that the heading provides. It's heading at 120 degrees, and it's heading at 500 miles per hour. But the wind is blowing it off course, so its true course is measured by this angle, the course angle. And its true speed is going to be the ground speed. It'll either be helped or hindered by the wind. So these are terms that we're going to be using in our navigation problems. Usually we'll be asked to find the, the true course and ground speed given the velocity and the wind.